Warning, the following episode of That Mental Ginger Show contains strong language and adult themes. All right, trip. <laughs> Hello and welcome to That Mental Ginger Show with your host Andrew Durning, aka The Mental Ginger. Well, my three faithful followers, we have a band on today. We're keeping the music theme alive and kicking. We've had bagpipers, we've had rapping bin men, and now we've got English guys. So joining us are two of the members of the band 96 Mars, Andrew Shepherd and John Lund. Guys, thank you so much for coming on. It's a pleasure to have you on, buddies. Yeah, thank you for having us on. Exactly. It's good. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad for inviting me here, to be honest. Ah, thank you. No bother. What we fellow druids have to look out for each other. <laughs> I'm into that. Yeah, definitely. I like, got to stick together. It's kind of like gingers. It's like a secret society. You just got to make sure you all, you're always there for each other. Same with performers as well, I guess. <laughs> so what mm-hmm. I like to do uh, when we have guests on is to hear about their origin story because everybody's got an origin story. So, Andrew, John, tell us the origin story either about yourselves or 96 Mars or both. <laughs> And should I go first? Or? Yeah, absolutely, because you've got both to contribute to. All right. Well, the band started some way, let's say, last year or late the year before that. Um, it all started with me and my best my best friend. Um, we didn't have a name at the time. We were just doing random cack, just doing music. We were doing covers, and I was just doing random stuff, and it would just be like, what are you doing? Just to make up some music. I've never heard of it before. It's, it, it, it's mine. All right, carry on. <laughs> Great. And um, everything was going really well because I was I did music back when I was a kid. I started at 13 till 16. I was in a choir. I had a school band. Everything was going great. Then I had a break. I was in and I was in another band became more of a hobby because they were cack. Then I joined a few others. I was like, I mean, you, you, you get them, <laughs> it, it happens. Mm. Um, then the unthinkable happened as my best friend passed away. He had a epileptic fit. He was turning on off his computer, doing his blinds. And just when it was about to stop, it, it, it started, fell on his bed, done. I'm really um, sorry to hear that, buddy. It's it's all right. Uh, thank you. It was just um, it was a very difficult moment. I have to admit, it was only twenty three. It it was it wasn't old at all. It was very young, mm. and uh, yeah, he had a lot to go for, a lot to live for as well, to be honest. But um, as everybody does, I was in grief, depressed, and then I came to the realization of. This, this has to carry on. I have to keep doing it. And I was, and I was thinking on the bed, the band still hasn't have a name yet. So I took, I took his uh, date of birth, 96, and his uh, name, Mars. And there, and there was go. And he was formed, 96 Mars. Then I collected the, base, uh, the bassist, Jack. Um, it, was a, it was a nice fella. I was very committed. Got into it, very good. Uh, then I collected a guitarist. Biggest mistake of my life because he was cack, not my <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, he's sitting right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I had, we had, I, I had a guitarist before him. Um, mm. Not many names, but um, at first he was all right. I couldn't complain. But then, he, but then he stopped coming, turning up to rehearsals. He, they, officially, he joined two rehearsals in person. And there was just excuse after excuse after excuse. But it, it, it kept piling. Um, yeah, been I tend, there, done that. Yeah, exactly. I tend to find myself somewhat of a good person. I mean, 
I'm somewhere. I'm somewhere on that mm. list. But um, it, it just in the end, I just went, look, it's it's just not working out. And the cheeky bugger had an, had two other bands besides mine in Birmingham. And it was like, you don't have time for mine. You don't have time for that. <laughs> what are you doing? <sighs> oh my god. But yeah, and then I picked up a drummer. It was also nice, is that it was um, friends with the bassist, so we all meld and mixed in pretty well. Mm. And then a mutual friend of mine and John's uh, basically introduced us, and uh, he was like, well, I play bass. I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm in a band. I was like, do you need a bassist? No, I don't, I don't need a bassist. I need a guitarist. <laughs> and he was like, didn't you? He was like, I, I play guitar. You play guitar? I play guitar. Boom. <laughs> Pretty much went like that. And then um, we did uh, we did our first EP. Uh, not, we just did it natural, just called it 96 Miles. This is the first one. Mm -hmm. Currently, we're steadily releasing the second EP called Symphony. Nice. Uh, nice. And then the, the biggest one, uh, we've got two other EPs on the go, uh, two completely different from the other. The one that's pretty much nearly done is called uh, the mini the minivan apocalypse. It's a very, a very groovy, very light kind of uh, EP. While the other one is yeah. going to be called uh, Limbo. 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 Yeah, it's going to be more heavy, more rock, more soft metal kind of thing. Nice. More or less. Nice. So, the, so people have two separate genres to listen to. If, if they want to do it. And um, yeah, and we're actually meeting up uh, this weekend, aren't we, yeah. for, for average rehearsals and that, get those songs done and and next year, early, get mm -hmm. those recorded, get them Absolutely. done, yeah. and then look into gigging, basically. And yeah, that's pretty much the history and story till now. Nice. How about yourself, John? What, what's your, your origins? What, what was your background before 96 Mars? Well, with me, it was like, always had an inflation of music anyway since I was a kid because my uncle himself is a musician. Oh, nice. Like, what do you play? He plays guitar himself. Mm. And ever since I was a kid, I always idolised him. Mm. And he bought me my very first electric guitar, which was this cheap Squire Strat. <laughs> well, you could get just the cheapest of the cheap. Yeah. And at the time, I always wanted to be like him. So it was like I kept watching him and watching him play, but I could never get to that point. Because mm -hmm. the guitar for me at the time was never there. It's only when my uncle's mate come round, he bought his bass. And it was his Fender P bass, Jet yeah. Black. And I picked nice. it up. Mm -hmm. And I knew from them moments, I was like, I've got to play the bass. Mm. So my first ever bass was this cheap little washburn that you could get for like 99 quid. Mm. Any beginner's bass, you start cheap and then you work your way up. Mm. And the first professional bass I had was a BC Rich, because at the time I loved my extreme metal stuff. And the first extreme metal band I listened to was a black metal band called Mayhem. Uh, I've heard of Mayhem, uh, they're good, they're really good. <laughs> My uncle showed me them because he always listened to every genre of music from classical to mm -hmm. blues to soft rock to hard rock to then the all same metal. And yeah. So I got that myself. It was all mainly because of my uncle playing music and then listening to his type of music. And then I got into a cry when I was in year six at Pie Green. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you know, just there just to do it. Didn't enjoy it, but it was just there just for me to have my mindset to build up my confidence. And then I started playing bass at Chase High, which was my old high school at the time. And then one of my mates was asking, oh, we're looking for a bassist. Would you willing to do a show for us for the school? I went, yeah, I don't mind doing that. I have no lessons anymore. I've got time on my hands. I'm free and I did it. And I enjoyed it. It was the first time on stage to an audience and... Yeah, I was crapping myself. <laughs> when I first time on stage, I was literally bricking it. But I was like, I've got to do it for my mate. I have to do it. Mm. And then 
literally about, and I played bass since then, even through my college days, I was playing bass as well with like college stuff and everything like for the course, doing a stage there as well, like doing a show for them. Mm. And then come to literally about four years later, I was like, I want to play the guitar again. So I got my very first um, Dean guitar because I always loved the company Dean. Yeah. And I was like, no, this is me. This is more me now. This is where I'm more comfortable. Mm. So I was like, okay, I'll pick up my guitar then again. So I played my electric, started going to a cue stick. Mm. And then literally I was like, because my guitar broke, so I needed a new one, which was also another Dean guitar, which was a Dave Mustang signature. Yeah. Yeah, this is me now. This is my guitar. This is my pride and joy. This is me at my peak. Mm. But then... Like Andrew said, one of our um, mates messaged me saying, oh, yeah, I need to introduce you to Andrew. I think you'd really like him. I went, yeah, awesome. And then next thing he asked me was when he just said, are you, you know, we're looking for a guitarist or anything? I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> just like that, yeah. that was you, signed up. Yeah, that was it then. And then now I'm enjoying music more than I ever have done. Mm. Also, so, what would you say was like your kind of what your specific genre for 96 Mars? Have you had to? Well, I know you said you're like doing different kind of genres, you're doing like soft rock, you're doing the kind of metal as well. But what would you say is your, your main one? What's the one that kind of gets you most hyped up? That's a hard one because we don't really like picking a genre, we like to do we don't like a genre to tie us down, we're always doing different things we're, we're sometimes doing country songs we're sometimes mm. doing pop rock others proper rock others punk it's like uh, it's, it's it's very hard i mean usually we say we're either alternative or indie because there's not really a genre we can tie ourselves on because mm. one ep will be this genre and another ep is going to be that genre and mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 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 not a easy question to answer to be honest mm. what were you, what were your kind of musical influences like growing up sorry what were your musical influences like growing up like what kind of bands did you gravitate to oh, oh. do you want to go first or? yeah i'll go first go on, so. <laughs> like i said um one of the first extreme metal bands i listened to was mayhem mm -hmm. but my whole life i've always listened to more like um, bands like Led Zeppelin, Leonard Skinner, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Foo Fighters. Um, those were my big main four at the time for like playing music. Mm. The Red Hot Chili because at the time when I was a bassist, I always loved Flea and how yeah. he played. Back. It was like that zero fucks given attitude, really, which I mm. enjoy because that's pretty much what I'm like. What you see with me is what you get. If you don't like me, well, off really. <laughs> like love it. Get, it's a good yeah. attitude to have. It's an attitude that most musicians need to have, really. Well, especially yeah. when you're experimenting with different sounds and different genres. It's a it's an artist's uh, prerogative. Like to just say, if you don't like it, well, there's the middle finger and there's the door. Exactly, yeah. and that's why if you look at some of our pictures online or some of like social media, yeah, I've, I've, I've scouted. I've Facebook stalked. I've, I've I've done that. I've done the scouting. Yeah, but yeah, I'll, I love like there's one particular picture that I like, and it's the one that it's going to be on. The, uh, it's on the thumbnail. It always reminds me of like a Creed album, you know, where you're just kind of staring in the distance, just like yeah. hmm, pondering life's questions. If you choke a smart, yeah. what color does it turn? <laughs> we went with purple. That, <laughs> that strangely enough, that is the 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 official band. Uh, uh, po uh, poster selfie we did because uh, the other ones before was just regular that was the proper one so I was mm. very proud of how it came out that's a good one that's a good photo like, the fact I'm comparing it to bands like Creed who were very big during the 2000s like, in late, late 90s so it's, like a, it's a compliment yeah. don't worry about it so where do you where do you see yourselves going what, what's the future hold for 96 Mars you, well, so you said you've got your you're working on your EPs, like your thing about getting the, the gigs going. Like, how many gigs have you actually done? 
Well, we've got the first EP completed called 96 Mars. Mm -hmm. uh, the second EP, Symphony, a uh, couple of the tracks have been has come out already. Um, some of them are like remixes and stuff like that. Uh, since the tracks themselves are still being tweaked, etc., to how we want to have them, they're going to be steadily, gradually coming onto the channel. And then mm -hmm. once it's all on there, I'll put it in a nice EP file called uh, Symphony. Uh, the reason why we're not putting much focus on that one is because all our focus and attention is on the third EP, the big one called uh, the Minivan Apocalypse. Mm. That one has pretty much all our attention on it because uh, we've, we've we've got big plans for that. The main track is got where it's got the music video is going to be a cartoon, which we're going to be depositing money for as well because it, it's such a good track, so yeah. good. It's called uh, I'm Ready, and hopefully everyone will like it. And then once that is out. We've got we've got a, we've got limbo now we want to get limbo out mm -hmm. uh, there might be a few singles in between who knows and after that just gigging and see where and where it goes hopefully lockdown will not be returning won't be coming back otherwise I swear to God I don't I don't, I don't know I, I was like what, what what can I say in this interview <laughs> <laughs> don't worry you can say what you want I've got I've got a warning recorded so that can just go at the start. You can say what you can say what you want. Well, I can't be bothered censoring anymore. You, you don't like it censored. But, so how have you guys found it? Like, are you is are unsigned? What is it? Like you don't have like a like a agent or a scout or anything like that? No, I'm not, not yet. To be honest, in all fairness, I'm not really looking because uh, the moment you have an agent or you're signed, the pressure is on. You got to mm. um, you got to do exactly what they say. You got to make sure you're in top form. You got to make sure you're. Bit your A to B to C's everywhere. And to be quite honest, we're not in that uh, stage, uh, to be mm. quite honest. We're pretty, I'm unprepared, but everyone else in the band aren't quite there yet. I would say... Are you speaking for John on that behalf? <laughs> I mean, I must admit, I'm pretty much like, you know, the only one that's always like, you know, yeah, I'm always willing to go out and give zero fucks with me I'm like yeah I'm ready I've mm. got the music I'm ready to go yeah it's more goes forward towards the other two yeah quite mm. honest because they're, they're not quite there yet but what else feels are... blame the guys that aren't on the podcast eh <laughs> <laughs> oh they know I, I've said it plenty of times <laughs> yeah. it's like it's like the old saying what uh, my music teacher used to tell me it was like if all else fails blame the drummer yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, well, even even okay. when I screwed up when, when I was playing the instruments at the time, they were like, oh, "Don't worry, that was the drummer spot." I was like, "He wasn't even <laughs> playing; it was my assessment. It was a solo assessment, and he's blaming the drummer." <laughs> Poor guys. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if he's maybe had like a massive a grievance. Maybe like he slept by a drummer and never called him back or whatever. But yeah, it was definitely one of those ones. So, how many uh, gigs have you done? Did you get to any before lockdown, what uh, kicked in, or has it really just been kind of just rehearsing, waiting for everything to open up again? Well, you've done one gig on yourself, didn't you? Yeah, officially, I did one gig by myself. Uh, the guitarist was unable to join me on that one. Mm. Uh, it was fantastic. I've got my name out there. Everyone liked it. I've also done uh, live performances online as well. Mm. Uh, I am looking into more gigs, but I've uh, got to be careful. Don't want to upset people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're breaking out for a solo career before the band's even taken off, eh, Andrew? <laughs> well, I got paid, and we're all like, where's ours? Where's our man? We weren't there, were you? <laughs> you get paid when you come. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's a very good way to look at it. You want, you don't expect to, like, an act to go on stage and then be like right so here's ones from my understudy that never bothered to you know, get on the stage like no you get paid for the time that you do exactly uh, yeah. yeah you're in the band yeah you're doing music but unless you're on that stage with me get pleasing the fans play, pleasing the random strangers we meet mm -hmm. I ain't split because it's like that's that's where the money comes in because it's like I got I went to the gig they weren't ready. I respect that, so I went. Uh, they loved it. I got paid, and they were just, and I was like, it, the, "You have to wait, man. Once you're on that stage with me, you'll get paid. But until then, 
<laughs> well, until then, well, uh, this is all mine. It's all mine, buddy. So that, means, uh, that means it's like if I ever get any, if I ever get the monetization for the podcast, does that mean that I just pay you, Andrew, since you were the one that reached uh, reached out for the podcast then? What? <laughs> oh, John's just looking so pissed right now. It's great. I just, I, I love to start it. We ginger, so we just have no souls. We like to stir things up. <laughs> I'll slowly put this invisible pot right there for you to put the money in. <laughs> <laughs> Time. <laughs> Oh man, you guys seem like such sound guys as well. What? Uh, uh, what? Hopefully, what fame won't go to your head, and you'll be like, "Who was that random ginger prick from Scotland that interviewed this?" What before, what before we made it? What, uh, that guy, that guy was a wanker. You know what I mean, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely, I like the the kind of style what, that you've got as well, like, Andrew. You're very suave with the slick hair and the the nice. Nice necklace. Well, sorry, the chain. The chain. Well, my dad's got a gold chain. If I said necklace, he'd shoot me. What? Well, uh, what? Well, John? What? Well, that that infamous that quiff, the quiff rolling yeah. back. It's well, if you're gonna go full flea though, you got you got to get a, a wee bit of a shaved head sometimes, like to really go for it. Like a so, <laughs> well, do you find that see when you're uh, when you're off stage, do you dress a different way than when you go on stage, like? Like from an yeah. acting point of view, like you've got a costume, you go on that helps you become the person, the persona that you want to be. Do you find that you have to have that type of gimmick, or are you still working out what that is to kind of get you into the zone, so to speak? We're currently just wearing what we do. I mean, we, we just get, we just look into our wardrobes. We pick out the best that we think will will match. Uh, my bassist goes for more punky, casual kind of look. Drummer, casual, and me and John usually go for more leather or jeans kind of feel to things. Yeah, uh, we are looking into having a personal look in the future, but while mm. on this stage, there's no point until we're on the stage where we're gigging and we're going out like stuff like that, properly gigging with all of us together. Mm. We will be looking at uh, uniforms then. Well, I wouldn't say uniforms. I would say a certain look, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yeah, like a more distinct or iconic look. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. And uh, no, that's it. Well, that's sound, man. I well, definitely respect respect the originality. Well, it's a lot of things that kind of die these days in music. You get pigeonholed into certain genres, or you have to be this way or that way. But so I always like speaking to the the quote unquote underground guys, like where they don't know really have. Mm. Uh, that what well, they're not they've not been molded by the commercialism yet. Well, I'm all about supporting the supporting the guys at the bottom and helping them work their way up. So speaking of which, when you are what well, still like finding your way and finding what well, your niche, so to speak. What well, to to the fans out there that may be listening, what well, what would you say your music is is meant to do? You know, some people say it's like it's meant to inspire. Some it like causes anarchy. Some is well, it's just to you know chill out and smoke some weed. So what's the what's what's ninety six is Mars's like um what agenda, like their mission statement? Uh to be quite to be quite honest, the only agenda ninety six Mars was uh, from start till now was a tribute to my best friend. It's mm -hmm. it was always about keeping our, our ideals, our views, and what we love alive, because he was doing it, he was loving it, I was doing it, I was loving it, and it's, it's there, as long as that 96 Mars is out there, my best friend is out there, in my opinion. Mm. And not just that, it's like, it's another thing why I don't want to find a agent or sign up, because I just want to do our stuff. I don't want to be pushed into. Okay, you need to do this very poppy song. Uh, you got. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I was like, but it just, I don't like that. I was like, that's a bit too bad, ain't that? I'm the one that's giving the checks here. You know. Mm. It's, you know how it goes. So it's like the the main focus always for 96 Mars is to keep the memory of my best friend alive. Mm. And and the beside that point, make as many smiles as possible because. If they're enjoying it and we're enjoying it, it's all worth it in the end, isn't it? Because yeah. the core focus of what music is all about is so everyone can have a good time. It's not about people having an ego or climbing the ladder. 
It's all about enjoying yourself, doing what you like, creating something with your own two hands and just watch people jump, smile, laugh and enjoy what you're doing. And if they enjoy listening, what you're producing, what this, more could you ask for? Ex exactly. What more, what more words can you say? Mm, exactly, guys. Well, and uh, then I feel there was a kind of what connection between you and I, Andrew, aside for the fact we share the same name. But um, I, I lost one of my best friends, same age. But um, that, uh, he took his own life. Well, he struggled with mental health and never, and that just never fought those demons back. Like, and that sent me into a bit of a spiral. Like, and that was why I kind of got back into doing like the performance side of it again. Like to what in a way to kind of honour his memory as well as you know other, others that I've lost along the way. So I really respect what you're doing. Like, and definitely for the the band name, keeping a, a tribute to him. Like, I, I really respect that man. You guys are. I wish he's nothing but success. So we're starting to come on time. So the final question that I'll ask you that I ask all my guests, if you could give one piece of advice to someone that is maybe struggling with uh, mental health issues, what would that piece of advice be and why? And I'm going to ask that one to John first. Yeah, I mean, me myself, because I'm dyspraxic, I do know what it's like to have that absolute downfall with depression because living with dyspraxia has caused me to go through a really bad spiral in life from being an alcoholic to being suicidal and all I want to say is to people out there you are not alone there are people you can talk to don't ever feel like you can't talk to anybody because I know what it's like. I've always been the type of person that always talks to others that are going through it. So then it's like I can help them. But I've never helped myself until last year. But when I knew I was at my tipping point and I knew I needed help. Mm. Whatever you do with anyone, whether it's me, Andrew, yourself, or anyone who's watching included, please, please, please talk to someone, whether it's your friends, whether it's your family, whether it's a close mate who you can trust with your life, talk to someone because you are never alone and don't ever feel like you're alone because I know what that's like. Hmm. I'm really sorry that you had to go through that, Mark, man, but I'm really glad to see that you're coming through the other side and, and things are looking up for you. And, and thank you for being so honest. It takes a lot of balls to do that. So Andrew, what, what would you say would be your golden nugget of advice? When we go through life, there's different stages you go through, some worse than others. And to be quite fair, it's like, it's, it's okay. It's okay to feel like shit. It's okay to be jealous. It's okay to feel like things are fair because end of the day, life is unfair. And that is the big equaliser to everybody, is that no matter what, one day or another, it all comes for us. And all I could say is, like, if you want to distract yourself, distract yourself. Watch a comedy, watch something funny, listen to your favourite songs, and just don't shut yourself out. The moment you shut yourself out, it's, it's game over. Always... It could, be a, it could be a friend, it could be family, it could be a stranger, because sometimes it's more comfortable to talk to a stranger than someone close to you, because the attachments and the connections, it feels like it don't come to your way. I've done it a few times, and it really helped. Always find someone. You don't even have to show your, express your guts to anybody. You just have to have a talk, ask how your day is, how their day is. It's all, in the end of the day, it's all about distracting yourself and, for, and waiting for that next stage where things get a little better and it'll carry on a little bit and more and more until finally it's a bit, it's just a lot better than it was originally. So just don't shut yourself out. Just keep pushing, keep distracting yourselves, keep finding different ways, find passions to get your motor running, music, drawing, art, socialising, anything. And 
one way or another, it will get better. Man. You guys are freaking profound. I mean, how old, how old are you guys, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I'm 25 in next month. I'm mm. 27, but uh, sometimes oh, yeah. we've... I've got the wisdom of, like, guys going through a midlife crisis, man. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. Like, you're, you've got wisdom beyond your years. Must be something to do with, like, the, the music in you. Definitely respect it. I mean, I'm 34 yeah. and I sound like I'm fucking 14 sometimes with what I say. So, oh, good on you. Yeah. Very, very good pieces of advice. So now, listeners, we come to that part of the show, the infamous part that I dread, it's Ask Andrew Anything. This is where, after me grilling the guests for 20 to 25 minutes, they get to ask me a question. I have to be 100% honest, it can go really well, it could go really badly. And since there's two guests on, you're in for a treat because I'm going to get them to ask me a question each. So it's double trouble. And we'll start with John, since the format seemed to work for me asking the questions this time. So, John, do you have a question to lay on this ginger greatness? <laughs> yeah, actually, I've got, um, got you into music then. Like, you specifically, what made you play music? To be honest, uh, music was not my first love. Acting was. Acting's been my, uh, the passion throughout my entire life, like, ever since I was, what, six years old being up on the stage and like, getting to be someone that I wasn't for a while, what well, was kind of the main goal. But music was something that I'm really good at. And I kind of fought it because my parents, they kind of they kind of pushed me towards it. Being a dad myself now, I know it's because you want them to ex what, hone what, something that's natural, like a real talent and what, see it shine. But when you're a teenager, you just think your parents are arseholes and they won't let you be who you want to be. So I kind of rebelled against it a little bit, well, not really paying attention in class and stuff. And I still got the top marks in the class. So imagine what happened if I actually tried. Well, and once I was getting back into the scene, well, the acting side, it was just that was, that was my passion, but it was never giving me the opportunities for the breaks that I felt like I was starting to deserve. And it made me a little bit resentful. And then after I took Not Well and decided to do my Flower of Scotland cover to raise money for mental health, I thought, right, I'm going gonna, gonna to see what this is about and just see how I go. And everybody said that, it was, that I looked very natural doing it, that I was good at uh, helping other people with being better musicians and just the doors that music has opened up for me in such a short space of time, what, getting to know the guys at the Top Talent Promotions, getting their support with the podcast what, and interviewing several like, artists and upcoming musicians and then being able to reach out to like yourself, Andrew. What, what, all that's been through me just what, finding that we spark for music again. And I've all, I have always loved it. I just never wanted to be the guy that was doing it because I, I used to have a really banging singing voice and now I sound like a, a goose farting in the wind. <laughs> well, that's a quote from uh, one of my friends the rapping bin man John Steele Steele if you're listening I do pay attention so well, I used to have a really good singing voice but I, uh, I always felt like a curse because it, again it was like push 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 from the parents well hindsight's a wonderful thing but I do still love music and what I love more about it is seeing the upcoming bands and seeing the unsigned artists or the guys that are what well, are just chomping at that bit to get that break and what well, hearing about their stories, finding out what they do, what they play, how they got into music. That's that's the thing that I think is really inspiring. And especially inspired by guys that play like guitars because you can play acoustic, you can play electric, you can play bass, like you can play a fucking ukulele. Well, you can play practically everything what what with that once you've got the gist down. It's it's brilliant. What well, being left-handed, or what well, I can't play a guitar because it costs too too much fucking money. But uh, it's just it's something that's music's a great equaliser. Well, it doesn't mm. matter your race, your gender, what well, whatever. Everybody loves music because if you don't, you must be a fucking alien. I meant to that. Is that wrong? So I hope that was uh, that was a suitable answer for you, John. So Andrew. Lay it on me. Lay it on the ginger Adonis. What have you got? 
You, you just took the answer from me. You know that, right? Requested, did I? Yeah, yeah. Shit. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't think so. But, um, okay, okay. What made you want to do po- do the podcast? Basically, in general, where did it start? When did it pop into your head? And when did it like you know what I want to do this? Like where did it all come together? Very good question. Thank you, Andrew. Well, very good for being on the spot. Well, um, it started during lockdown, like everybody and their granny, when they were all bored, they were just like, all of a sudden, they were starting to make podcasts, and I thought, eh, I'm going to do it for a bit of a giggle. Why not? And it was just more like me just ranting, like, you know, like, first world white man problem, essentially. <laughs> well, and you know, people seemed to like it, to which I added to them, what's wrong with you? And some of them wanted to come on and I thought, well, we'll just do a wee daft things. We'll do like top 10 what, wrestlers of the, or WWE or whatever. And we'd just, we'd have a bit of a laugh and a bit of giggle. But the recurring theme was that all the guests had some sort of relation to me like, in the performing arts. But I would have uh, knew them either from like drama groups. I knew them from like doing drama or music in high school. You know, all that, all that kind of stuff on the creative sides. And I would always like to talk to them a wee bit about the creative passions before we would jump into our general insanity. And then I took a wee break to us um, with my aunt passing away and me taking not well and and just ha- well, and doing the song and stuff. And I had a wee think about it. I just thought, well, I do want to keep it going, but I want it to be a bit more professional. And what are the things that I think that I'm good at or talking about or that I have knowledge of? And I have knowledge of the arts. Well, otherwise I wouldn't get the people on and I wouldn't have the attention that I've been very, very fortunate to get recently. And I'm passionate about mental health. Well, I don't think it's talked about enough, especially with guys. I think it needs more work needs to be done. The pandemic's kind of pushed that to the side. And I think it needs to go back to the forefront because if you're not well up here, everything's going to be fixed all over the place. Well, they've got, they've got to both be one and the same. Because physically, like, I'm a fucking wreck. Like, I'm, a, I'm fat as fuck. I don't exercise. So I'm a wreck. But in here, well, like, I'm fucking Usain Bolt. Well, like, I'm, because I'm doing the right things now. Like, I'm, I'm doing the therapy. I'm taking the right medication. I'm making sure to push myself and try uh, different things. Well, like, even, like, at the weekend, I took uh, the kids out, like, to a weekend of dino park thing that we had up in Glasgow. I wouldn't have done that last year. I was too terrified because I thought I was a horrible father and I wouldn't be able to do anything with them. But I did it. And we all went out and we had a lovely time. And it just felt like it was a massive relief, a huge weight off my shoulders. So do, so doing this podcast is kind of like my way of keeping those good times going. And maybe my boys can look back at it someday and go, who the fuck was this guy? And why is he my dad? <laughs> <laughs> So I hope I answered both your questions uh, appropriately. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Well, you're just, you're just sound lads, and I really, really do hope that things go well for you. Well, um, drop us your links. Tell us where uh, our audience can find you. Right. Uh, we're on, currently on Facebook and YouTube. It's 96 Mars. No numbers, full letters, capitals, spaces in between. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should see it. Find it. Hell, we're on the top search on Google, so yeah, we're not that hard to find. <laughs> nice one. I'll put the links in the description at the bottom of the video as well. I'll give you as much support as I can. Guys, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on. So to everybody listening, I've been Andrew Durning. They have been Andrew Shepard and John Lunn of 96 Mars. Thank you so much for coming on. Until next time, take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.